Hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. Welcome back here. Uh, gather over the DC booth because you are in for a very rare treat to see how comic books are really made and constructed. This is the DC Art Academy, and we have one of our most illustrious teachers, probably the most illustrious color artist in the business today. I guarantee, if you haven't realized it from the credits and seeing his name a million times in comics like Hush or in right now, uh, we're calling the Superman Year One, right? Yeah. Uh, you have this man has definitely colored your visions of superhero dreams so without any further ado everyone gather around welcome alex and claire to the stage who's going to guide you into the world of digital color welcome thank you yeah. thank you very much yeah. so i'm going to use alex's appearance to uh plug one of the greatest comic book companies of all time that's now part of our imprint here but uh, alex you got started with wildstorm I did. But even did. before it was Wildstorm, right? right? Before Wildstorm, it yeah. was called Amin Studios. Yeah. Jim hadn't named his studio yet, and he, uh, mm -hmm. he had a talent search in, in one of his uh, comics, and they were looking for writers, penciler, mm -hmm. thinkers, colorists, letterers, everybody. Right. And at that time, the strongest part of my portfolio was colors. Yeah. I just made a conscious decision, I'm just going to send colors. Right, because the, the way I've read the story before is that you would go and you would show your work, and you had good pencils and good inks yes. and color, and they would come back and say, this needs work, this needs work, but your color's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> so in a weird way, you should be applauded because you listen to the critics, yes. but only enough to say, I need to focus where my strengths are. Correct. Right. But yeah. you're also still an accomplished artist and everything else. So I think you have yeah. to be. All, all, yeah. all of the, the, the great anchors and colorists have that, that strong artistic base that, that you need to be able to... to to work in this industry. And I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about that, but what we're going to start on today is we're going to do an image. You're going to do a cover, is that right? Yes, this is the cover to uh, Superman Year One number three. Oh. Uh, yes. So, so we're, we're getting ahead here. They haven't seen a this. A little yet. bit. Uh, okay. They've actually shown this uh, already. It's uh, solicitation. They haven't shown us uh -huh. the, the process of it. And so okay. this is, uh, uh, we're going to try and figure out, uh, the, going to talk to my, my, my thought process of what I go through in the, in the cover, what I, what I think through and do in it. Uh, Usually at home I work on a, on a desktop computer. I work with a Macintosh, an iMac, and a, a, a Wacom Cintiq, which is a right. digital. Uh, are you able to switch up on. between like that and a personal, you know, and other machines? Or are you always staying at the same workstation? At home I, yeah. I, I just do the workstation. I yeah. think you know my computer's in my office, and when I step out of there, it, it's my house. Right. So, okay. so you, that's where you break away. I try right? and keep work at work yeah. and home at home. And you probably uh, have all your presets and everything else already. Yes. The things. Yes. Okay. It's a lot yeah. faster than this, and the settings are, are mm. something that I've done over so, for so many years sure. that I know exactly what I'm looking at is going to print that way on on paper. Well, uh, let's start with the beginning of the process. So sure. you've, you've gotten the art, and you've been able to work with some of the greatest artists in the history of the business. Yes. So the, the first thing is probably a little awe and excitement at, at the piece that you're looking at. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of, you know, I feed off of the energy of the art uh, mm -hmm. and, and with each page and each cover. Uh, and, and before I start each series, trying to also establish a look for it or a feel for it. Uh, with year one, since it's a retelling of, of Superman's mm -hmm. history, I wanted to go very organic with it, so a very watercolor feel, right. um, and it and it plays to the strengths of, of John and Danny's art as well, since it's so uh, there's some great spot, spotted blacks and there's some gigantic open spaces. Right. I wanted those spaces to look to feel like there was more than just color there, but. Uh, there's a texture to it. There's a well, there feel is. To there it. is a, like from the ones I've seen so far. There is an earthy tone yes. to the work. Yes. Now, um, when, you're, when you're first getting that and you're getting those kind of color choices, do you think about what it's going to the size? I mean, these are odd sized books that that open up some stuff for you. Yeah, it it, it definitely gave me more of a canvas to paint on, but it also created uh, each page was larger than it used to be. So yeah. the some of the hurdles were it's a larger image larger resolution, so my computer was working slower. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, and more of it's uh, going to show. So when you're doing a cover, I think it's a little different than when you're doing an interior panel. Correct, right? correct, yeah. And so, you know, and, and when you work with covers mm -hmm. instead of interior pages, you tend to cheat things a little bit because you definitely want that image to pop off the, the stands. Mm -hmm. uh, where with, within the, the book itself, you, you want to tell a story. So you, you, you limit your palettes to help tell that story. Right. I don't want to talk to you about that, but okay, so here we yeah. are. We've gotten the image. Right, so when I get a page, it's, it's black and white. It, mm -hmm. It's either on paper and I scan it, or they send me the scan. We work at around 600 DPI mm -hmm. uh, in at least image size. So if the book mm -hmm. is, is 10 by 7, right. we go 10 by 7 at 600 DPI, and that, that ensures that the, the inks are going to print nice and crisp, okay. uh, and then the color reproduction is going to be 
fairly close to what we're seeing on the screen. Um, the first step that I do is called flatting, and that's really just going through and selecting each item and filling it with a flat color with what you're seeing right here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the it's the most uh, it's probably the most boring part of the coloring <laughs> process, uh -huh. uh, but it's the it, I take advantage of, it, especially with covers. As I'm flatting something, yeah. I'm thinking through what I'm going to do with it. Uh, it, it. At this point, I'm kind of thinking, all right, well, I'm reading the art, seeing where the shadows are coming from, the high, the lights coming from, all that stuff, so that once I'm done with the flatting stage, I can just go jump right in and start rendering. Uh, for the interiors of a book, I actually hire people to do the flatting for me. Okay. I average about a, an hour a page. Right. Then if, if each book is 22 pages, I'm saving myself about 22 hours worth of work right. by having someone else do the flatting. So that as I'm coloring page one, my flatter is ideally six, seven pages ahead of me. So I'm never really slowing down uh, the process. Now, I read also that you would start a project by taking like a two-page part of an interior and testing out your palette choices on something like that? Yeah, doing the equivalent of what you would do like to sketch. If you're going to draw Superman, you've never drawn him before. You want right. to sketch him out to kind of get a feel for what works with the face, the nose, the, the spit curl, all that stuff. Yeah. I do that in color. So I, I, I take a page and I just slap color really just clumsily mm -hmm. to see if, the, if that's going to work. And then I'll maybe I'll zoom in and do detailed texture work mm -hmm. in areas to see if that's going to work with the art too. Uh, and then I'll just ju jump right in. Now you choose palettes for scenes. You choose different palettes based on the, the work and the character. Yes. Uh, can you give them a better definition of what a palette is and what you mean by that? So for palette is, is how many colors you're using. Right? So uh, uh, if, if you're going to be outside in the sunlight in the park, you're going to use a ton of color. But you want to have one, one unifying color that kind of binds them together. So that as you as you jump from that panel to that next panel, and that same set of colors or palette appears, you know that you're in that same sequence. Right. And then if you jump from that to say a flashback sequence, and you flip the palette and you go with a very monochromatic like sepia tones, it, it immediately gives you a visual cue that something's changed, something's different in the story, and that's part of the storytelling right. where, where you're you're growing going linear with the story, and then all of a sudden you switch palettes. To, uh, to give the reader a cue visually that okay, we've, changed, we've changed something here. Yeah. And if it works, it takes you where you want them to go, and they don't notice that they've been taken there. Right. It's a subtle guiding principle that leads you through. Correct. Now, you choose complementary colors. You're getting these things to the scenes. Did you study color theory early on, or was it just an experienced uh, bit of knowledge? That you so it was part across? of my, my uh -huh. I have a, a studio art degree from mm -hmm. college, and part of the, the curriculum was color theory. and, and, and uh, it was a very extensive course that I took, which I loved, and clearly it, it helped me. And now these people can have <laughs> access to pro-level tools, but they should go out and get versed you in get classical color. Yeah, right? and so there's, yeah. I'm sure there's mm -hmm. video tutorials mm -hmm. on YouTube or elsewhere yeah. about color theory, but there are, there are courses that you can take, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and there's also... Uh, some people offer courses for specific yeah. to, to, to coloring and all that stuff uh, because it's, there's not one specific method yeah. doing it. It's like math. We can have a problem uh, and, and you can solve it one way and I can solve it a different way and right. we all both get the same result. It's the same with art. It's the same with digital coloring. There's different methods. As long as you get a good result, uh, it doesn't matter how you get there. No, exactly. You can go any way, and as long as you get there, and it's, it's the seamlessness of it all Correct. that matters. Yep. All right, so I don't want you to even know what your go, next step is. Uh, I'm working on an iPad now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easier. Uh, in the past, I would have to set up a laptop and a Cintiq and a, right. and a plug and a this and that. And the beauty of, of now with the iPad is, is uh, this is what I use when I travel. Uh, it, it allows me to do about 99% of what I do digitally on, on my desktop okay. here, and then I just transfer back to ensure that everything... Which was out. amazing when you started. You never thought that would be possible. No, that's right. great. Uh, the beauty of working digitally too is I can zoom in and out as much as I want. All right, and so my first step is going to be selecting what I'm going to paint first. Uh, and let's go. We're going to start with with Superman. All right, I'm going to grab this selecting tool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select the flesh tones, and then go straight to painting. Um, I always start with this the the actual color for each character, mm -hmm. and I have. Uh, in my swatches palette, already selected like different colors are specific to each character. Okay. So like his flesh tone is already mixed for me, and I just easily click it and, and drop it in to 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 help me color faster. Uh, but what I am going to do, is I'm actually going to 
in reading the art, I'm going to wash this with a little bit of blue, since that strong warm light source is behind them. Yeah. Uh, everything that is uh, on the opposite side is going to be a cool color, that contrasting temperature okay. as, as opposed to color. Uh, and so you, by making the other stuff cooler, you make him warmer. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to wash him a little bit. Uh, I can adjust the opacity mm -hmm. and the size of the brush. And then very lightly start to wash the skin, and you can see just by adding a little bit of that blue, yeah, it's starting to contrast with that background quite a bit. All right, and I'm gonna switch brushes. Uh, this one is a really soft edge brush, and I like to work with these, these harder brushes. That allow me to mm -hmm. brush in some details of, wow. the, of the shading. And just really, Cutting the shadows based on what uh, knowledge of anatomy comes into play right. and, and how light will behave depending on its light, uh, uh, its source, and the different. That's you know, there's just no escaping a need for knowledge of anatomy uh, yeah. when it comes right. It well, comes, it, yeah. superheroes are like the ultimate yeah. an anatomical. Uh, uh, the ideal, so, yeah. you know, uh, who, early who on. Were your, who were years growing up? I mean, you obviously were a fan. Didn't you, you did comic books with your brother, is that right? Yeah, my brother and I used to, uh. we would buy the comics, and then we'd, like, draw, like, yeah. the ones we liked. We would redo the pages. them, yeah. 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 And, and uh, it was, you know, he's, he's probably one of the main reasons I love comics, is yeah. that it just kind of fit off of his yeah. energy. Is he an right. older brother or a younger brother? Older brother. Okay, so that's yeah. why he made you do the coloring, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I was going to say, that seemed like an older yeah. brother idea. You should finish this yeah. up for me. We would <laughs> both draw with both huh? ink. I would yeah. color. <laughs> All right, so we right. only have five minutes, so I'm going to let you All do right, some so more I'm going to go real quick here. here as fast huh? as I can with this. Uh, the different modes allow me to paint mm -hmm. in different... Uh, screen will, will, will help me bleach a color a little bit. Uh, add will do the same, and it'll help me do it at a, at a faster... So you could be adding in Great. some pieces and subtracting others from certain colors and correct. Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna just kind of come in and start adding some of these highlights from this light that's coming from behind them, but it still catches the edge. Wow. Of the each part of his body. When did you realize that? there were colorists in comics and that this was a, a path that it was available? Um, I started noticing it as I was showing my portfolio around yeah. that, that I really noticed color okay, uh, and, and how good colorists could really add to the art and, and, and the not so good colorists really were detracting from it. Yeah. Uh, and it took me back to the stuff that I did with my brother. It's like, yeah. well, I think I can do this. Yeah. And so I, I started creating color samples as well, thinking, hey, maybe I, that's, that's yeah. my thing. Right. And it turns out it was. It turns out it was. In, in a really, really big way for the benefit of all of us, I would say. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's easier to list the comics that you've not worked on than it is to list the ones that you have. <laughs> and they're all routine, routinely excellent, uh, even my beloved Aerosmith. So yes. I love uh, that. Yeah, yeah. I, that's, I just wanted to get a shout out because if you don't know that comic, you should get that comic. <laughs> that's something else. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's... it's People ask me which character uh, would yeah. you love to do that you haven't done. It's yeah. like I, I think I just ran out of yeah. DC characters. Well, right, right. I mean, because we, you know, we kept challenging you to go like, well, you've done everything else so excellent. What else can't you do? And you, once you start talking with the big characters, they all intersect. So eventually, with Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, or someone will show up. And uh, yep, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick thing here with, here with like different texture okay. uh, brushes that I use uh, at different sizes and opacities. This is how I bring in and, and mimic certain textures uh, that look like it's a watercolor brush wow. uh, and things like that. And I'll, I'll, I'll use different colors and switch. Again, the blending modes are what's really going to help me accentuate what's going on with this stuff. Uh, let's go a little bit stronger here. And each of these go down as layers, is that right? If you go I'm, back in, you can... Technically, yes. Yeah. I. I I work on one layer for the uh -huh. most part initially, so I do the, the, the initial rendering in one layer, okay. and then I'll, I'll add additional layers to add special effects. Because yeah. uh, I don't want to mess with the line art at all initially, yeah. and then once, once I'm done with that, 
then I'll go ahead and, and add well, that. Well, I just think it shows a lot of trust in your choices, that you're making choices fast and quick, and you believe yeah, yeah. in the choices you're making. You're not going to go back and pick apart little pieces of it. You, you're feeling it develop. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to cheat a little bit and jump ahead here. Uh, and I'll show you what wow. the rendered piece would look like. Uh, and so some of the steps that I've gone through yeah. is, is this is what it looks like when I'm done with it. Uh, I've rendered through with the different textures, mm -hmm. added some, some weathering to the, to the sphere right. to look like it's been put through the ringer. Um, and then uh, I wanted to play with the drop shadow off of that. Wow. So I made a selection and dropped it in on a separate layer. And this is when I start to add the layers. Uh, I just think then, of all the Golden Age comics I've read and that there's some artists that would have killed to have you be able to do some <laughs> of this stuff for them. I would have loved to do it <laughs> as well. Uh, and then uh, here's the special effects stuff. What I really want to pop that light yeah. from behind them. Uh, so I've added that strong yellow light uh, that creates like that soft glow around yeah. him. And then I came in with like a little bit of an orange one that makes it uh, a little more saturated. It pops a little bit more. Uh, and then the last few things are uh, little little kind of trails of dust right. that are coming off the different parts of the, the planet just to give it a little more atmosphere, more realism. Um, and that's... And again, that's you know, this, if you can see everybody, these are effects that he's putting in and your eye picks them up and they feel an uh, integral part of the image. So yeah. it's amazing. Um, last thing I want to ask is, do you have any advice to people who are aspiring to follow down the path of coloring? Sure. Uh, I mean, if, with coloring, definitely color theory. Uh, also study the people whose work you like. Right. Uh, every artist develops their own style by borrowing from the artist that mm -hmm. they like. So it's not like I, I color just like Joe Chido, yeah. but he has a great influence of my work. But I, I studied Mark, Mark Chirello yeah. and Lynn Varley yeah. and, and Adrian Roy and all those put yeah. together. I, I take little bits from every one of them, and that's how I created my own style mm -hmm. uh, so that when any artists ask me for advice, yeah. it's, it's whether it's a colorist, a pencil, or an inker, is, is study those whose work you admire yeah. and, and, and try and mimic what they do, not so that you copy them, but take what you like from them that works for you right. and then from the other artists that you like, and, and, and that's how you develop your own style. Now, I hope you listen to all of those colorist names. We had Varley, Chiato, uh, Mike Chiarillo, and Adrian Roy who worked on and was credited on more Batman issues than yes. anybody but Bob Kane. Uh, maybe she did more, but okay. Uh, but I will just say <laughs> that you really need to understand the power of color in these images. Respect the letters, respect the color artists, because you feel it when they don't hit. And when they do, and it's seamless, it just, I mean, you can just see how much more power is in this image based on this color. Yeah, so, thank you. This is one of the all-time greats. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Alex and Claire. Thank you. Thank you for giving up your valuable time to sure. come out here and teach the wonderful world of color. Thank you. Thanks for coming out.